This project is all about social issues that are affecting you and your community and the people that you care about. And it's called the Social Issue Relief Print Project. For this project, we had some discussions first about what types of social issues are affecting our communities and our world today. And I documented some of the things that you told me on this sheet of paper. Then you picked one of those issues and researched, found some information that supported your opinion about uh, the social issue or topic that you uh, that you picked. And you created a, a design, a drawing based on uh, the information that you found and your opinion. So when you're planning what your carving is going to look like, this little handout will help you make some of those decisions. Keep in mind that on this handout, the areas that are white have uh, been carved away. So they are not raised to the surface. They do not pick up ink. The areas that are shaded in black represent the areas that uh, have not been carved away that are raised uh, from the surface and do pick up the ink. So in this first little square example here, all of the background and the inside of the smiley face have been carved away. The outline and the smile and the eyes have been left behind to pick up the ink. In the second example, the background has been left raised. Only the inside of the face has been carved away. So everything other than the inside of the face is what is raised from the surface and picks up the ink. In this one, everything in the background has been carved away and the um, the eyes and the mouth have been traced over with the lino cutter to, um, to not pick up the ink and leave it sort of as a, like a reverse image, like negative space. So you can do any combination of those types of carvings, but remember that you want to use three different blade sizes. Uh, so keep that in mind and make a drawing on the back sheet of that planning document. Uh, it works best if you get it all designed on the back of that planning sheet so that you can easily transfer it. So what you want to do is just darken your design in pencil. Make sure that it's all really nice and dark. Plan it so that any area that you shade in with your pencil is what you are not going to carve. So anything that's left white on your design is what you will be carving. So all of my background, I'm going to be carving out. The lettering and the graduation cap, I'm going to be carving out. Uh, I'll be carving out some detail in the hair. So I'll use a different blade size for each of those types of carvings, and that will meet that requirement for using three different blade types. So then put your design pencil side down on your block and use the back of a popsicle stick or your fingernail or uh, whatever else you have available to burnish or rub into the back side and it will transfer your drawing. And if you've got any text on your design, it will make it backwards for you because remember that's important that your text is backwards. So again, use three different blade sizes. I'm going to start off with a five. As you carve in to your block, remember you want to um, sort of scoop into it like a little mini shovel or a mini spoon. And if you're doing it correctly, it will not be crumbly. It will look like long stringy pieces of shredded cheese. It will feel really smooth, uh, really uh, like butter, as they say. Remember to go slow, take your time, use a bench hook to hold your block in place and keep it from wiggling around on you. Stay safe while you're carving, never carve towards yourself, always carve away from yourself. Push your block right up to the edge of that bench hook so that it gives you some leverage to carve against. If you need to carve a curve, remember to curve your block, or not curve your block, but 
but rotate your block. That's what I meant to say. Rotate your block rather than curving your knife around and carving towards yourself. Now that I've carved away all my background, I'm going to use a two. I'm using a two here, carving out that lettering on the inside of the graduation cap where it says, art makes a difference. So I used a two. I didn't want to use a one. Didn't want my letters to be quite that thin, uh, but I did use a one to make some of the details in the hair and the little uh, fringy thing on the graduation cap. Can't remember what that's called. Anyway, after you're done carving, you're going to run a test print or as they call it in art, an artist proof. This is where you test out your carving. You see if there are any areas where you need to carve deeper or where you need to maybe clean up some edges or make something more clear. But it's your test print. It gives you an opportunity to look to see what it's going to look like when you make your final prints. So use a barren. Make sure that the paper goes on top of the block. And when you use a barren, you want to use it like an iron and not like a hammer. You don't want to beat it into the back of your paper. You want to smooth it out like a shirt so that it pulls up all the ink. So as I'm looking at my artist proof here, there are some changes that I want to make. Um, that D in the word difference, for example, is a little bit uh, wider than some of the other lettering in that word. I don't necessarily want to go back and carve out every single letter of that word, but I do want to make some alterations so that it's not quite so different. Uh, there are some other things I want to maybe touch up some of the edges, um, but it looks pretty good for the most part. So I'm going to wash and dry my block and then I'm going to continue carving. After you've made your artist proof and you've made any corrections that you want, then you're going to move on to making an addition of four prints. An addition, remember, is just the total number of prints that you make in that set or in that series. So put a little bit of ink onto your bench hook. Remember, you don't need much. Refer to the dots on the lids to see about how much ink you should be putting on your bench hook. And then use the brayer to spread the ink around. You want it to make that nice sticky tacky sound and then use the brayer again to roll the ink onto the block. Remember never put the block onto the bench hook to pick up ink that way. It doesn't work as well. Just don't do it. Use the brayer. Make sure that it gets a nice even coating. Put the paper on top of your block and use the baron like an iron to smooth it out. Not like a hammer. You're not trying to beat it into the wall. You're trying to smooth out the wrinkles like a shirt. Not the wrinkles, really. You're trying to pull up all the ink from the block. Um, so you want to make sure that your prints are not faded like that one was. Uh, you have time to make plenty of copies of your print to get uh, four good copies of your print. So do a good job. If you want to add multiple colors to your block, you can do what's called a rainbow roll. You don't have to use all the colors of the rainbow. You can do what I'm doing here and just use a few. You want to spread them out onto your bench hook no wider than the length of your brayer so that when you roll it out, the colors don't mix. You want to keep it in one direction. So then roll it onto your block, keeping the brayer in one direction. You don't want to go in all directions and mix the colors. 
Uh, and then just like you did with uh, your single color, put the paper on top of the block, smooth in the backside with the baron, and pull your print. Now remember, you want to make an addition of four signed prints plus your artist proof. So you're going to have five total papers that you are taking a picture of and turning in, but um, just four copies of your finished print. And you want to make sure that they're signed appropriately. So the way that you sign a block print is by sort of writing a fraction on the left hand side of your paper right underneath the image. And you want to put the order that you made each one in. The first one is a one. Uh, and the, the bottom number of the fraction is the total number of prints that you created in that edition. In the middle, you write the title, and on the right, you sign it. So this one was the first print that I made out of a total of nine prints. I titled it Art for All because my print addressed uh, art education, and I signed it. Here was the second out of nine, the third out of nine, the fourth out of nine, so on and so forth. Make sure that you sign them using that little fraction, giving it the title in the middle, and signing it on the right. Remember, you are only required to make four, plus your artist proof that you make first, um, four finished copies, and turn your best copy into me so we can hang it up for display and you have completed your social issues print. Good job.